There are usually some telltale signs that a manager is going to get fired. Uh, you you can kind of smell them in the breeze. You know, the, the 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 warm wind of somebody getting fired just washes over you. And very, very rarely when this sort of stuff starts happening, I, I honestly can't remember an instance where this sort of stuff starts happening where somebody doesn't actually get fired. And I think it's time to be all, you know, honest with everybody else here that Eric Ten Hag is going to get fired, right? They're just figuring out the right way to do it. They need one more big catalytic moment that's going to finally set off the idea that they're going to fire him. But the guy is going to get fired. He's not long for this world. And I think that is best for all parties involved. And I'm, I'd be surprised if you didn't think that would be best for all parties involved. But what are those magnificent telltale signs that you're going to get fired? Well, we'll start with something like this. Anytime people are writing articles talking about how your potential replacements are jockeying for position, how there are debates going on behind closed doors, you know, to try and select the person that is literally going to step in and replace you. How how Sir Alex Ferguson is apparently a big fan and is he's advocating for Max Allegri, right? Not only are we having preliminary discussions being reported on in Italian media here about you know, Max Allegri, the former manager of Juventus multiple times over, and Thomas Tuchel being rumored managers of Manchester United, it's gotten to the point that Sir Alex Ferguson, who, by the way, I, I couldn't stop turning around and seeing Eric Ten Hag being compared to Sir Alex Ferguson and how Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, w was struggling in his first couple of years and then managed to turn it around and become one of the best managers of all time, right? But if even Sir Alex Ferguson, who went through that, somebody that would understand the concept of giving a manager leeway, giving a manager time to figure it out, right? Because he's the example everybody uses as don't fire a manager too quickly. That guy is apparently, according to Italian reporting, a big fan of Maxi Allegri and is, is trying to advocate for him to the United board, it's over. Brother, it, it's over. You start seeing reporting like this, we're, we're not even in the preliminary stage of investigating who's going to be there. The reporting in Italy says it's already basically been nailed down to two candidates, according to the Gazetta sources, that it's Maxi Allegri or Thomas Tuchel, and that's it. Which just fucking sidebar... No way that's the right choice either. All right, I got nothing against Allegri or Tuchel. Tuchel managed to throw a bunch of, you know, bunch of misfit toys on the field and win a Champions League with Chelsea. Maxi Allegri oversaw one of Juventus' most successful overall periods, even though he could never bring home the Champions League. Both of these guys are clearly very good managers, but they're both very mercurial. And they are certainly not people that are known for building a harmonious dressing room, which is the one thing that Manchester United needs. Maximiliano Allegri and Thomas Tuchel are not going to be able to go into Manchester United and do what they normally do, which is, you know, find a way to get the best out of a large collection of world-class players. Manchester United doesn't have a super large collection of world-class players. They're trying to identify the next ones and build a cohesive team for the future, and they've had a rotten locker room atmosphere for a fucking decade. And they need somebody who has the same profile as an Ange Postacoglu or something, right, to come into that situation. Somebody that is proven to be able to build up winning programs instead of taking over winning programs and making them win a lot more. Right, Somebody that is going to be able to provide long-term success, not just short-term. The sort of thing that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would talk about when he was at Manchester United. The idea that, hey, maybe winning a trophy can actually you know, paper over the fact that the club isn't actually improving. That's something that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer actually said. Right, I know, because I've got that memory. You know what I'm saying? It's like a steel trap. That and history, facts, and football manager tutorials. That's all that swirls around up here behind the backwards hat and the headphones and everything else. I guess there's nothing else. But yeah, that, that, that's all I've got swirling around upstairs. And it's, it's on. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is freaking right. I believe in that. Right? I, I believe that over the last five years, and much rather, or sorry, over the last three years, it would have much rather been Arsenal. Right, Even though Manchester United was bringing home that last FA Cup, Arsenal has built that culture up. They've built that belief up. And I mean, freaking, they beat, Ch beat PSG in the Champions League 2-0. Sure, maybe there should have been a penalty on Calafiori. I'm not blind here. right? But they beat PSG by multiple goals in the Champions League. PSG, one of those money for funny clubs. Uh, and, and they're headed in the right direction. Whether you like Arsenal or not, there's a good vibe. There's a competitive vibe. right? There's not this just 
funeral procession of a vibe that is around Manchester United and Chelsea for, you know, good measure. I'm not saying Manchester United is the only club here, but Manchester United is the only club that seems obstinately determined to not fire its manager when things are not going particularly well. Now, Chelsea's too quick with the hook. United is now officially too slow, right? And I'm adding fuel to the fire here. Eric Ten Hag is still employed by Manchester United, and I feel it's only logical to sit here for a good portion of this video and talk about the type of manager that should come into Manchester United to replace him. But if for whatever reason you're in the camp and you that you believe right, that Ten Hag should still be the coach of Manchester United, I present to you this tweet. Eric Ten Hag took over United three months before Unai Emery took over at Villa when they were 18th. Villa are playing Bayern Munich this week while we're 12. This guy's a Manchester United fan. Right, it, 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 look, Manchester United has not been good. It's not been what it's supposed to be. I've talked about that too much already, so I'm not really going to talk about it again. But Eric Ten Hag's time is expiring. His time is running out. But Manchester United seem like they're going to make the same mistake again anyways, so what's it matter? What am I doing this for? I'm doing this for internet clout. I suppose that's the reason to make every single YouTube video, although this entire channel is basically just a giant echo chamber for me, at which, you know, which point I really should brag about the fact I ran 9.3 miles today, which you would know if you followed me on Strava, which I've never actually advertised what the name of my Strava is. You freaks just find it anyways. And shout out to you. You guys give me a lot of kudos on Strava. I ran 9.3 miles today. It was fucking awesome. But that's not the sort of clout that I'm going for. No, I'm telling you, Ten Hag's getting fired. I'll probably say within the next month, next time Manchester United gets blown out and there's not a red card, he's going to get the call from Jim Ratcliffe the next day. It's not a huge payout. He's got one year on left on this contract, right, because they triggered the one-year extension or whatever after the FA Cup when they said they were going to fire him before. Just goes to show you that your first instinct is probably usually right. Because now Manchester United's in this whole situation where they could have just gone and tried to hire somebody this past offseason. I know it wasn't the sexiest, hottest manager market, right? That's what everybody seemed to be talking about. But, you know, if you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, that's the definition of insanity. And I feel like we've gotten to a point where we're just repeating the same thing. I actually have one more specific graphic that I, I want to show you. I wasn't initially going to show it to you, but I realized that we only really sh we only really talked about this on stream. So I feel like that you guys should you you guys should have it too because a lot of you guys you know you don't watch the streams. You're too cool for that or something. Uh, if, if you look at this little graph somebody put together, this is the roster for Manchester United. Uh, if you can see in green, those are the players that Eric Ten Hag has either promoted from the youth team or signed himself. Uh, and then you see all the players of other colors are the ones that were debuted or signed by other managers, uh, either Ole or Louis van Hall in Luke Shaw's case or Jose Mourinho and Lindelof and Dallo's case. It's the vast majority of the team uh, that Eric Ten Hag has chosen to be here. Now, that is, uh, that is a little bit unfair, obviously, when you're talking about youth team players that maybe because of financial situations he was forced to call up. But when you spend $100 million on a Beyblade, that's going to happen, Right. So it, this is something that has been entirely under Eric Ten Hag's control. I think Eric Ten Hag is going to go somewhere else, a little more out of the spotlight, somewhere like Ajax, and find a lot of success again. I don't think this is the end of his career, and I don't think he's a bad manager. But this hasn't worked. He's had plenty of time to figure out. Like He's had plenty of time to figure it out, and it has not worked. And the, the writing's already on the wall. If this reporting in Italy is to be believed... The conversations are happening on the other side of the wall. Everybody knows this is going to happen, and we have officially entered the stage where Eric Ten Hag is completely a lame duck manager. He's just sitting out there in the breeze, right? And it is just a matter of time until somebody actually decides to cut the last strings on the flag and let it fly off into continental Europe before it lands on a mid-table team in France or something, where Ten Hag is destined to be headed, and he can go from bald fraud to bald savant again, then Manchester United will be able to move on. As much as you might think I, I am Manchester United hater, because they are a very compelling team to talk about recently, for sure. Um, I, I, I believe that football is better when Manchester United is good, whether they're a villain to you like Real Madrid or whether they're your favorite team. 
I think it, it just feels weird and uncomfortable to have Manchester United wallowing around in 12th. Because to be perfectly honest, even though Chelsea has been doing a similar thing the last couple of years, it's kind of Chelsea's vibe. They finish 10th, they win the league, everybody's screaming and yelling at each other in the dressing room, and the owner spends another billion dollars. That's what Chelsea does. This is not what Manchester United does. Uh, and it has been what they do for quite a while now. And Eric Ten Hag was supposed to be the program builder and the savant and the savior. And he hasn't turned into that. So apparently Maxi Allegri and uh, Maxi Allegri and Thomas Tuchel are going to get a shot at that. But if you hire either one of those guys, I don't think they'll last more than two years. And you'll probably sustain a lot of the same systemic problems that exist there right now. So.